from my background as a biologist. I've uh, evolved a method of understanding human behavior and ultimately human evolution. And this is rooted in the levels of neural architecture which we have inherited from our ancient ancestry. These levels of intelligence, levels of neural architecture, sometimes I call them the six brains, there is a triune brain model out there that for me is limited, it's way too limited. And the six brain model or the six intelligences or if you prefer the six levels of neural architecture are in my view much more comprehensive and much clearer in terms of practical application for our development. The first level, of course, is cellular intelligence. Yeah. This is a, a very ancient, thousand million year old uh, level of organization. Yeah. We work with this in conscious breath work. We work with bringing oxygen and carbon dioxide into the tissues. Yeah. Moving carbon dioxide out of the tissues. Yeah. Building up carbon, di carbon dioxide resilience. Yeah. Encouraging healthy mitochondria and so forth. And we can work with creating the happy cells. If we create happy, good neurotransmitters in the system, we're leading towards creating happy cells in the system. And we know how to do this with meditative practices, with conscious breath work. The second level of organization is the enteric level of organization, the gut brain. And this gut brain, the enteric nervous system, around about 500 million years old, is very robust. It's moved from species to species to species. We've inherited this from, like I say, 500 million years of evolutionary history. And this gut brain, which wraps around from the lips, around the intestines, all the way around to the anus, yeah, it, this gut brain gives us three primary feeling tones. Moving towards, pulling away, and indifference. And interestingly, if we look at the Asian disciplines of meditative depth, they work very much with these three primary feeling tones. They call them Raga, Dvesha, Moha. But it's the same essential pattern, moving towards, pulling away, indifference. These three premium tones drive our behavior, unconsciously, under the radar, unless we have practices which make those drives conscious. So within the holokinetic framework, or the holokinetic method, yeah, we have key practices that you can work with to start making the enteric nervous system much more conscious, to bring to light those feeling tones so it becomes clear about our motivations. What we have to understand here is that emotions drive behavior. Behavior is driven by emotion. Emotion itself is driven by those deep feeling tones of the enteric nervous system. How we treat our guts, how we build our microbiome, all the little microorganisms inside the guts, affects our health, affects our well-being. Of the 100% of information, neural information, information flowing from the body to the brain and so forth, yeah, 80% of that is flowing from the body up to the brain. When we can work with our guts effectively, when we can work with the body effectively, we change that 80% of information and that changes our attitudes, it changes our perspectives, it changes our clarity. So body-based practices, embodied awareness, conscious breath work, working with some of the practices which are derived from uh, very old Asian traditions, from the wisdom of these traditions, we can work directly and effectively with these old aspects of our neurology. If we don't work with them, they drive us unconsciously. We are moved by them. The next level of our neural organization is the amphibian reptilian brain, around about 350 million years old. And this part of our brain, it's in our brain stem, yeah, gives us basic, basic survival drives as a land-based organism, which is to breathe and to eat. With conscious breath work done intelligently, we can train this part of the brain.
We train this part of the brain by breath holding, by working with conscious breath and breath holding. And when I say breath holding, I mean effective breath holding. There are practices of breath holding which uh, do not effectively train the brainstem. So we have to be very conscious and intelligent about what we're doing in terms of breath holding. And breath holding is one of the approaches of working with this level of organization in our neural architecture. One of the things about the reptilian amphibian brain is that unless we work with it, it has a level of panic which again manifests through our system. If, we, if our respiratory musculature is held in a state of tension yeah, and we have ways of working with keeping the respiratory musculature free of unnecessary tension, yeah, then the brain stem is going to be sitting in a gentle state of panic. So training the brain stem clears out that panic so we are not again driven by that. This is very important to understand that if we don't work consciously and directly with these ancient levels of our architecture, our yeah, neural architecture, they will yeah, drive our behavior. If we want to be conscious leaders, if we want to be effective in the world, we have to work with these basic levels of neural architecture on a daily basis. And practices of meditative awareness, practice of conscious breath work, embodiment practices enable us to do that effectively. The next level of organization is the um, proto-mammalian brain, the limbic system, the emotional brain. And this level of organization really is about deep emotional drives to behavior. As mammals, we are pack animals, we're pack creatures, we bond. So mammalian emotions unite us, they bring us together, they give us our place within the organization, our pack. And they teach us whether we're separate or connected to the rest of the group or to individuals. So they're very deep ancient drives to behavior to make us do certain things, behave in certain ways, and so on. When the amygdala, a part of the uh, limbic system, which works with trauma and stress, is overactivated, our perceptual patterns are affected by that aspect of neural architecture. The linkages between the emotional brain and the more evolved parts of the brain are absolutely crucial in terms yeah, of how those emotions drive us or not. So if we want to be driven unconsciously by arising emotional patterns, yeah, then we won't bother doing any discipline. If we want to be uh, more liberated in terms of how we have the choice and can respond to those emotional drives, we will be doing a disciplined practice of meditative awareness, conscious breath work again, and working with emotional intelligence, because that gives us the freedom in terms of our behavior of how we are not then pushed and pulled around by that ancient proto-mammalian level of organization. The next level of organization we have is the simian sapien brain, which is the left and right uh, cortex, how they link together, how they join together, and the relationship of all these structures with the prefrontal cortices. Now the left prefrontal cortex is the most evolved, recently evolved executive aspect of the brain. It's switched off if uh, deep emotional drives come up unless we train it. Yeah. Having a balance of left-right brain activity, which is logistical, linear, linguistic, yeah, with poetic, creative, artistic, spatial awareness and deep body awareness. Yeah. The balance of these uh, aspects of our neural architecture gives us the capacity to be very coherent in terms of our overall approach to life. We're looking at a balance of the guts, yeah, the heart, and the mind. 
as a full body-mind experience of being fully alive. We bring these into balance through breath. We know full well from heart rate variability and the Heart Math Institute yeah, that the heart is the most electromagnetic organ in the body. And when that is in a dysfunctional relationship with the brain, it causes illness and disease. We know full well that that balance of organization, those organizational levels, we can achieve through conscious breath work, through meditative awareness. When we have sufficient meditative awareness to be aware of emotions in their inception as sensations and how they arise and bubble through our system, we have choice in whether to respond to those or not. Without choice, without awareness, we have no choice. The same is true at the simian sapien level of organization. If we believe we are thought patterns, yeah, and those thought patterns kick off and drive our behavior, yeah, we have no choice. So if those conditioned thought patterns arise from our ancestry, yeah, the world we grew up in, our schooling, our family, and those are not necessarily relevant for the immediate context in which we are operating, we have no choice but to act out those thought patterns. Meditative awareness, yeah? conscious breath work, gives us the capacity to understand ourselves as not just our thinking. So we can create awareness space where those thoughts, as they arise, we have choices to how to respond to those. The next level of organization I call the disciplined brain. The disciplined brain. We know now from enough Western scientific research that meditative practices change the structure and the function of the brain. We know that with conscious breath work we can change the structure and the function of the brain. And we know when we work with embodied awareness practices yeah, that again we change the information flow from the body to the brain and therefore change how the brain operates. We change our perception and our patterns of thought and feeling. Discipline brain is the newly evolving yeah, human brain. We know full well that with focus meditation practices, for example, we increase the linkages between the medial aspects of the cortex and the lateral aspects of the cortex. They get thicker. With other practices we can change the relationships between the emotional brain and the cortex. So we are changing our brain structure, changing the way the brain waves work, changing the way the body and brain work as a cohesive entity through discipline, through practice, through daily practices. You know, I tell people, I tell people that, you know, you wouldn't, do you ever not clean your teeth in the morning? Do you have a day off from cleaning your teeth? And the answer is no, of course they don't. You know, so for me, Doing the discipline practices that we do are a way of basic psycho-emotional hygiene to keep us in a state of well-being. And we have to be in this state of coherent balance. Yeah? Body, guts, heart, head, all connected, all joined up, all listening to each other fully so that we can be effective within teams. When we have this level of capacity, yeah, then we can look at relation intelligence, the arts of communication, yeah, the arts of teamwork, the skills of teamwork. And it's from this place then yeah, that we can start to look at being highly effective, highly effective as individuals within teams, highly effective as, as leaders within organizations. So this six brains or six intelligences or six levels of neural architecture gives us a framework of understanding as to how and why we do the practices of holokinesis, the methods of holokinesis.